Hi everyone! So nice to see you here. Um, if you watched my last video, I shared with you some of the thoughts that I have when I'm too comfortable or lazy or fearful to make art and some of the reasons why I tell myself it's not a good time to be creative. And um, today I will pick up arguing with myself, basically, <laughs> and um, debunking all those myths. So stay tuned, we're starting with art is a waste of time. And trying to just fight this weird reaction that we sometimes have to creation. And here are all the reasons why, or maybe at least some of the reasons why, it is definitely not a waste of time. Um, first of all, art can be very therapeutic and it can be very relaxing and it can put you in that flow <laughs> kind of state. Um, it can make you forget your stressful day and your stressful job. Um, you can get appreciation and admiration for what you do. Um, it's not based on superficial things like your look or wealth or, I don't know, the car you drive, but actually something that you made. And that's really a source of pride. Um, like I said, seeing the improvement is fun and learning is fun and healthy mentally and probably even physically like you live a different life when you're learning you um, have a sense of identity and accomplishment and that doesn't just go for art of course but for many many um, endeavors and things you could dive into but art is just as much a learning process as anything else and it takes effort and it doesn't just take um i don't know being very expressive and just letting everything out but it also it's it's an art <laughs> so it does take some um mental work to produce something really beautiful and meaningful and that can be a huge sense of pride and accomplishment you can see the world differently when you draw a lot you just you pay more attention to details and i think that's a huge advantage to being artistically inclined having a goal is good for you like having a goal like saying um i want to be able to draw semi-realistic portraits in one year from now having something to work towards is healthy and it's a form of self-expression just as fashion can be a form of self-expression music can be a form of self-expression um, but on the more um, non-material side it also expands your creative thinking and it makes you think creatively in other areas as well and you dive into this new world where you find role models and you can read books, you can listen to podcasts, you can make friends in the art community, which is a, mostly a very supportive and amazing community. You can visit museums, you can find inspiration everywhere and that leads to happiness. You can um, be sitting in your car and see a nature scene or even a poster or a building and it's a source of inspiration you think oh i could paint that or i have an idea related to that and that just gives you that energy that makes a life worthwhile it gives you self-confidence and it gives you something to talk about with others it does also cultivate the mind because you're researching things that you want to draw and paint, you get interested. Like, for example, you um, you want to paint a Hawaiian scene. 
So you start researching what plants grow in Hawaii. And then you get into Polynesian culture. And then you realize that they have these really great tribal tattoos. And from there you find on Pinterest or whatever a lot of portraits of beautiful ethnic looking people and it leads you to people of the world in other places and one thing leads to the other and you learn so much on the way and you expand your horizon so much that it just makes everyday life fun and you learn things in the fun way <laughs> so art really is not a waste of time and you probably all know this but yeah a friendly reminder for me to myself and to you um, I should probably move on to the next point which is also disguised as I can't draw and the last time I drew I was kind of frustrated and that I believe is fear and fear is a big 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 factor in making us not want to draw because it's a scary decision sometimes. I know it sounds kind of silly and yeah, there are scarier things in the world than drawing, sure, but it's something that really can affect us negatively or positively on a very deep level because um, other things are easier to do. Consumption is easier to do. It's easier to sit down and watch TV and tell yourself that you're being inspired. And maybe you are being inspired, but if you're not doing anything with it, yeah, then um, it's probably not as great as you thought it was. But um, it's a tough decision to say, instead of just watching other people do stuff, and admiring stuff, I'm going to try to emulate that because you always run the risk of being frustrated in the end. You always run the risk of not being happy with your work and then doubting yourself and feeling crappy. You'll ask yourself, will I like it? Will other people like it? Will they perceive it as, I don't know, a waste of time, for example? Or um, will it seem pretentious? Um, because they will compare it to other artists and who am I to do this and so it does take a little bit of courage to get over that fear and that can be trained and it's okay to be a little nervous it's the same as being an actor uh, being in theater or just presenting anything to other people it's okay to be a little bit nervous as long as you can get over that and focus on the task on hand and um, just see how far you can get really give yourself a chance and for every frustration that you have because some drawings and paintings do not turn out the way we like them there is also very happy moments where you're proud of yourself and you did something that you really really like and really enjoy and that will give you a pu push to try and do that again and it doesn't always work but that's what makes the good experiences and the successes even more meaningful okay so point five is about things being meaningful and being inspired and being in the right mood and like asking yourself what's the point in all this why am i doing all this i don't know where to start and i don't know what to draw what could be special enough to be drawn so the first thing i'm going to say is everything can be meaningful and everything can be special um, there are many works of art there that have been admired and have led people to shed tears over them and they were super super simple it could mean something to you or it could mean something to another person in ways that you cannot comprehend but if you look at we see faces everywhere and still seeing a portrait can be really meaningful and special although we've seen 
faces all, all our lives and we've seen two eyes and a nose and a mouth and there's nothing really unusual unusual about it but still portraits if there's that little something in somebody's eyes or in their look or their expression we relate to that and that makes it special so my advice is to start drawing anything, draw your own hands and feet, which is great practice, by the way, because hands and feet aren't the easiest thing to draw. Or just draw things around you, um, like build yourself a still life scene and draw that. Or just start with lines, really anything. And then you'll see that it'll get easier and it will lead you to other ideas. And if it's still really hard, try and find a subject that you care about even if you're not extremely passionate about it something you just like something you enjoy and try starting from there or draw a person you love or a pet that you love or just an object that you like you could take this further and draw for a good cause like donate the money like if you sell your stuff you could donate the money to help people, animals, the environment, whatever. Or you can try to express emotion, express what you feel right now. Even if you feel nothing, even if you feel bad. You know how poets always needed pain <laughs> to make their, to write their best poems. Um, just let it out, even if, if it's just for you, for your own therapy, basically. Or Try to tell a story. Some people really enjoy storytelling. Like illustrate something. Um, or make it simpler. Like make a, a painting that tells something with symbolism. Um, be inspired by songs and movies that you like. Just take the lyrics of a song and try to translate that into visual things. And don't wait for the right time. Because there is not going to be a muse. Maybe sometimes there is a muse, yeah. But most of the time, if you want to have a passion, you create that by doing the thing. You can't just wait for something to like fall from the sky and be your passion. And that's many people have a hard time finding a hobby that they're passionate about because they think it's like God-given or something. <laughs> Um, you, I think that most of the time how this works is that you find something that you kind of like and enjoy and you start doing it and the more you do it, the more you develop your passion. The more you learn about it, the more you read about it, the more it becomes a passion. So you're really making this for yourself and you're making a habit out of it that at some point maybe you can't live without. Um, watch YouTube videos. To inspire you that often works just as for me if I want to work out there are a lot of similarities to working out by the way like many people know that going to the gym is great for them and still they don't do it and for me I often dance at home and if I'm not in the mood I will watch some videos and just hearing the drums and things will motivate me to get up and do the same I'm, I'm the kind of person who likes to when I see something that I like I want to copy that so maybe not everyone is like that, but I think for many, many people it helps to see other people doing that because we need that visual reminder of what we want. We just seem to forget <laughs> in the day-to-day -day grind what we want and we need that picture to be reminded that, oh, right, if I drew, then I might end up with something like that and I might actually be proud of it and like it and enjoy the process even. So don't overthink because um, too much analyzing and research is a form of, of a procrastination sometimes. You're telling yourself you're being smart about it, but sometimes it's just that fear that is holding you back and telling you to do something that's easier for now, which is consuming stuff instead of making them. Um, make goals for yourself. Having a goal can make something meaningful. Like if it's just, oh, I'll just draw or whatever. If I draw or don't draw, it won't make a difference. But if you have a goal to 
be able to draw um, turtles by the end of the week. That will make it important to you. Reward yourself, plan rewards, like give yourself art supplies, for example, that you wouldn't normally buy. Work towards those things that, like save up to things that usually you would say, I can't afford that, but now it's become important enough for me that I'm willing to sacrifice other things in order to be able to afford those watercolors or whatever paints you want or paper you want. So there are always workarounds and ways to make things more interesting and fun and compelling. The I'm too old to start argument, I think I've touched on that in a previous video, but I'm going to look at it from a different perspective this time, um, or I haven't done it in a really, really long time, so I don't know how to anymore. Art is not dependent on age. Drawing and painting is fortunately something that we can do when we're 80. Unlike sports, for example, if you're a ballerina in your 20s, you may be fine, but your body will deteriorate and some things you will just not be able to do. Art is something that, unless we have a debilitating disease, um, we can most likely do in up until we're pretty old, really. I think the real issue behind being an adult and being older is that we have more responsibilities. And this also, tie also ties into the, um, the issue of not having time. So what you need to be, the way you need to be thinking about this is not am I too old or I don't have enough time, but how can I reduce my responsibilities and how can I work smart instead of hard? How can I make life easier to make room for art? And that can include your household. Do you really have to vacuum? every other day or is it enough if you do it once a week um, do you really have to cook a really elaborate meal or would a simple bowl be enough um, can you get like one of those robot things to vacuum for you can you instead of going on your regular vacation on a tropical island or wherever, Disneyland or something, spend your vacation drawing and painting. Um, can you maybe, if you have kids and they're distracting you, can you draw with them? Um, make them more interested in art. And I get it, as an adult, we don't have as much time and that's probably the biggest advantage that people have when they start young but there are ways like some some things are like sometimes we just perceive our time is limited um, and sometimes we actually do not have much time and what I mean by that is we will tell ourselves that, oh, we don't have time, but we'll watch our TV shows in the evening and watch Netflix and watch YouTube videos. So I guess there is time, but it's a matter of priority and it's a matter of not going the easy route. And even, even when it comes to like social events, Look at the people surrounding you. Look at your friends and acquaintances and how much time you spend with them. Are they all good friends? How do you feel when you spend time with them? Is it necessary to go to parties and whatever? Or would you feel better if you sat at home and made something for yourself instead of small talk for five hours? I'm being a bit negative here, but I'm just trying to illustrate my point. <laughs> Um, choose your friends wisely and maybe choose friends who will support your passions and your interests instead of just going out for coffee or going wherever 
um, it's sad but true that as adults we have to be a little bit more picky because we have so many responsibilities. We just have to set our priorities, right? Um, if you like to read, are there audiobooks that you can listen to while you're drawing? If you watch a lot of stuff online, be very conscious about what you watch on YouTube. Is it going to help your art journey or is it just like the trendy stuff that's funny um, or the, the cute animal videos? I mean, that's it's okay to do all of these things every now and then, but just be conscious about the amount of time that you spend and you will realize that you probably can make time every day for art. And a little bit, even if it's just a few minutes a day, will get you further than having the entire Saturday just to draw and paint and then not touch your brushes for another week or month even. So don't underestimate the power of 50 minutes that you have in a day and try to make the most out of it. I know it's tough, I go through the same thing, but I keep telling myself that no matter what it is, try to create something every day. So, um, being too poor for art supplies, I think is, it can be true, but can also be a little bit of an excuse, because if you're really trying to learn how to draw, I'm pretty sure that most of us, all of us, <laughs> will find a pencil in their home or any mark-making tool, uh, a pen, um, anything, a piece of chalk. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm pretty sure that every one of you has a pencil at home and I'm pretty sure that everyone has paper and that's all it takes. You can keep yourself busy with just that for years and then move on to painting because sketching is an amazing um, basis and foundation for painting. But if you want to deal with colors, you can. You, it doesn't have to be like the most expensive set of paints. There are um, paints in hardware stores, at least where I live. There are student grade paints, there are not artist grade paints, yeah, but if you're really struggling with your finances, then that will do, you're still learning, you, it doesn't have to be. And, and there are some amazing art pieces made with the most simple and most inexpensive material out there. So that's not really, that's not really a problem at all if you can. I know it's tempting. And um, sometimes you think that, oh, if I had those supplies, then I'd be able to do that. And it is true that good quality will make a difference in your art. But if you're just starting out and you're trying to motivate yourself, really just grab anything and you can still make amazing art. And I think this is the last point now, which is really laziness. I mean, we wouldn't call it that. I mean, who would want to call themselves lazy? But wanting to be comfortable, being stressed from your day job and thinking, you know, I need this for my peace of mind right now. Um, maybe it's laziness. Maybe it's healthy to give yourself a break. I'm not sure. But if you really want to be an artist and if you want to improve and you keep finding yourself um, seeking comfort instead and think about your stressors think about what you can change in your job or your mindset about the job um, to feel more relaxed and more in a creative state even if it means meditating or reducing your hours if you can and also try to just constantly remind yourself that this is just your body's initial reaction. It's telling you, oh, I want to be comfortable. I want to just lie down on the sofa and watch some Netflix and just enjoy it. And like, there is nothing bad that can happen to you there, right? It takes more effort to say, I will grab a pencil and make something that I really, really hope <laughs> will look nice so that it will be a good experience for me. So 
remind yourself by visualizing where you want to be at some point. What do you want to be? What do you want to achieve? What's the kind of life you want to lead? We're, we're he, like humans are stupid. We need to keep reminding ourselves of that because we tend to be like very animalistic and simple creatures in the end, following their instincts and just wanting food and comfort and sleep and things like that. So just try to be very aware of your thought process and maybe make a mood board for yourself, print out some pictures that inspire you, that visualize what you want to make and what you want to be and hang it somewhere where you can see it. Like change your um, phone display photo, change your computer display. Just have those pictures surround you everywhere because we need that visual reminder of what we want to be and I'm pretty sure that will help you get over that first resistance and that first fear and finally start creating. So if you would rather um, play football or watch baseball or cook and you're happy with that, that's completely, completely fine. But you have to ask yourself, do I love drawing and painting and art enough? to kick myself in the butt right now is that the kind of life that i want to have and if it is then just try to trick your mind and tell it you know i'm not listening to you right now i'm just going to start and you will see in five or ten minutes you will be enjoying this and wanting to do more of it so um this talk ended up being much longer than I had intended it to be but I hope that you could relate to it just a little bit and if you have gone through that as I have then I maybe at least you don't feel like you're alone in this and you're reminded that it just takes a little bit of work to get there and if it just helps one person get up and draw today, then I'm happy. Thank you for listening to my talk. And I hope to see you next Friday when I upload my next video. Um, thank you for your support and see you soon. Bye.